Where's my, where's my snacks? I swear to God, I put my turkey jerky somewhere. It's on the, it might be on the bookshelf. It might be on the bookshelf. No, it's not on the bookshelf. Oh, look. Can't talk to people without my shirt. Touch something. Okay, I'm back. All right. I, it's, some, it's somewhere. I put it somewhere. Where is my turkey jerky? Pearl. Pearl, did you take my jerky? Pearl. Look at this dog. Look. Haven't even started yet. Look how lazy she is. Pearl, did you take my turkey jerky? I can't do this with no snacks. She ain't gonna, she deaf. She ain't gonna respond. What time is it? It's, oh, it's late. Hold on, it's late. Let me pause my music. Let me pause my music here. Hold on. I don't know how to operate just yet. Pause. Pause. Okay. Hello, it is past time. Let's get started with Carol's Corner this fine evening. Hello. Hello. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Carol Pussycat. And I'm from the great state of Louisiana. Hello, everybody. Coming to you here live on Tuesday, okay, the 21st, I believe. Now, if you notice, those of you that have watched before, previous weeks, um, I'm not in my normal, my normal part of my dwelling, right? Normally, I'm outside having a drink on the patio, uh, but I'm not out there today for two reasons. One, I went out there with my beverage, ready to sit down, ready to, ready to have a lovely conversation with everybody. Uh, and it's t it's too darn hot, you know. Like uh like the musical theater says, it's too darn hot. I can't stay out there more than thirty seconds with all kinds of liquid running down running down my back, down the down the area. Pearl, I swear to God, don't you mess with that cat. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They had to be in here with me, or else they'd cause a ruckus outside. But that was the first reason. Second reason is it seems my neighbors have decided to celebrate four twenty a day late. I go out there, get a contact high just by setting up my lawn chair. My God. I mean, I'm all for legalization of marijuana. I know I haven't taken a public stance on that yet. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm all for the, the decriminalization, the legalization. I think it helping many people. But here's the thing. Y'all just can't be sitting out in your backyard smoking it when I'm, when I'm, when people are out trying to have a conversation. Okay? I got to keep my wits about me. You know what I mean? I got to stay sharp. It's important. You can't be making a mockery out of things like this now. Okay. Let's talk about some 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 things that I've thought of over the week, okay? Um, as you'll notice, I'm in my office. I've had a lot of time to do a lot of activities. Still in quarantine. Obviously, everybody's still in quarantine out there. So I've had time to renovate my home office. Now, if you look around, I got a bookshelf that's chock full of items, some crayons, Got some packing paper there. I got a, I got a, a box fan and some exercise equipment that has yet to be used. Uh, here's my workstation. Got some peppermints. Got some beer and a wine glass. I like the the fanciness of it. And this was a closet. This was a closet, but Burner tried to turn it into a sound booth for me. Uh, he took off the doors and he took about five of our blankets off of our bed and put it, hung it from the ceiling and bought some egg crates. I get a, I get an email. I get an email one day that, you know, you just spent $200 on egg crates from Amazon. Whatever. He said he built me a sound booth. So that's a little sound booth. So that's where I'm coming to you from. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you all about something today. Now, I'm going to talk to you all about dating. That's my main topic for today. But I got to get something off my chest right away. Okay. I know last week we talked a little bit about, you know, how we're surviving during quarantine, how we're surviving during this period of our time, you know. Uh, and one thing we talked about that makes life a little easier is, is doing things like Instacart, grocery pickup. Okay, we talked about the Walmart pickup. And I said, you know, that I had, come, you know, I had a Walmart pickup coming up and things like that. I've been using the Walmart pickup pretty successfully. Now, let me tell you what happened today. I had a Walmart pickup order scheduled for today. Today, to pick it up, okay? I made the order a day and a half ago. And when I made my order, all the items that I ordered were in stock, okay? Now, I was under the impression that when you place the order, one of the reasons you place it ahead of time, and they put a hold on your credit card, your debit card, I, I'm under the impression that when you pick up that item, it's going to be in your cart. Okay, no, apparently, when you use the grocery pickup service, you only reserving the time. You all know this? That... 
they only pack your bags about an hour and a half before you pick up the groceries. So if something has gone out of stock before then, you out of luck. You out of luck. So half of my order today. So, okay, I was making, I was making shrimp scampi this week. Ain't got no shrimps. Okay. Uh, I ordered two of the large packs of chicken. I ain't going to have no chicken. What am I going to do? Eat vegetarian? Come on, this is America. I spit on myself. That's how angry I am. I'm spitting all over the place. That's how angry I am at this. I got a bag of frozen turkey meatballs, and that's it, people. That's what I'm down to. Thank you, Walmart pickup. And then, okay, one more thing, and then I'll talk about Dayton, okay? When you order produce, some items, some items you can purchase like in each, okay? So, like, you can get an avocado, and it says one avocado, 88 cents. Fabulous. Wonderful. But some things, I needed a jalapeno, a single jalapeno to make my paleo, Carol's famous paleo chili recipe, okay? Uh, I need one jalapeno. You can only order them. You can only order them by the quarter pound, a jalapeno. So the lowest amount you can get is a quarter pound of jalapenos. And I said, good Lord, fine. How many jalapenos is a quarter jalapenos? And it tells you three to five jalapenos. So I figure, okay, I'll get a quarter pound of jalapenos. I'll have, I'll have my one jalapeno I need for the chili and I'll have a few extra. I don't know, maybe I'll get crazy. Maybe we'll have taco night and I'll spice it up. You know what I mean? I opened my trunk. I brought this here to show you. I opened my trunk. There are 12 jalapenos in this bag. There are 12 jalapenos. Who in the hell, unless you're playing a jalapeno poppers for some kind of Super Bowl party, you ain't, nobody needs 12 jalapenos at a time. What am I supposed to do with this? I already got bowel problems. They're trying to kill me. Why am I trying to kill me? The only thing I could think to do with 12 jalapenos is make, is make jalapeno poppers, and I'm trying to wash my figure. During this quarantine, I'm trying to be calorie conscious. And Walmart's going out here making me large. That's the only thing. That's what's happening. It's Walmart's fault. If I gain any weight during this, it's Walmart's fault, okay? It's not the rampant alcoholism or eating peanut M&Ms. It's going to be Walmart giving me the wrong amount of produce. You can put that on my grave. I gain weight because Walmart... I can't, get, I can't get too much more into it, okay? Let's start talking about tonight's topic, dating. Okay? Feel free... Like I said, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll answer some questions. Oh, hold on. Crash is giving me all kinds of suggestions for recipes. Turkey, meatball, stuffed jalapeno. Whew. I'm sweating just thinking about that, both from the heat and from excitement. Thank you, Crash. I'm going to try to figure out something to do with that. Now, let me get my notebook here so I can take some questions if people have questions as well. You know, as we're talking, feel free to just, you know, say something. Oh, sorry. I tried to cross my legs, and I did a strength exercise yesterday. I think I ripped a hamstring. Okay, so let's just start talking about dating now. Now, you all know for me, I've shared before that I, I am married, okay? Not to Bernard, not to Bernard. He is just, you know, a, a cohort. He is a roommate, um, but I do have a husband. I do have a husband. I will never let you see him because that's my private life, okay? And I, I can't have people messing with, with my private m m relations, okay? That's just not Christian. I don't like it. Okay, um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what dating was like when we got together. You know what I mean? And how I think it should be. You know, dating back in my day, back in my day when I was looking for a husband, it was real simple. Real simple. You know, you go to your normal activities. You don't have to do anything special. You go to your normal activities, uh, your bridge group, uh, People, a lot of people that I, know, that I used to know like to hit ducks with, with pebbles in the park. That was an activity. Um, people like to do that. You know what I mean? Uh, you just go to your normal things and someone, someone else will be that interested in what you're doing and you start chatting up. Oh, Heather, what'd you say? Where are your almonds? Funny you should mention that. I get, oh, they fell a little further down. Did I show y'all this last week? I got my own special bag. It says Carol's nut bag. Oh, Lord, the sweat must have rubbed off some of that magic marker. Permanent my ass. Look at that. Get a little boob sweat on there. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm being disgusting. Okay. Bowling league. Yes, Crash. Bowling league. All kinds of activities people go to. That's how you used to meet someone. My husband and I, we met doing musical theater. That's right. I got a lovely voice. We met doing a musical theater show. We were doing the show 9 to 5. We worked on 9 to 5. We met during that show. He asked me for a date. And then shortly after, asked me for my hand. Bing, bang, done. I don't know what young people make such a fuss about. 
You find someone, you like them, you say, let's give it a try. If it doesn't work, that's what divorce court's for. This is America, okay? That's freedom. That's what that is. So we got married. Uh, let me tell you a trick, though, okay? A trick that you need to remember about dating. If you just so happen to be out there currently in the dating world experiencing this, you know, maybe the first time, maybe the 50th time, you know, whatever, whatever season of your life it is. My, here are my rules for dating, okay? Number one, be true to yourself. I think we talked about that a few weeks ago. I said, who, who you are going to be at your 50th anniversary, you need to be on day one of your date. What you look like, what you talk like, your ideals. I'm not saying that people can't change throughout their life. That's not what I'm saying, okay? You can evolve with the times, with the culture, okay? You can become a better person. But you better not be someone fake when you're, when you're trying to get to know somebody. I hate that more than anything else. I swear to God, when I was younger and I, was, I had many suitors, okay, many suitors, people lining down, down the block, lining down the block, you know what I mean, for a piece of this. That's a science. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. That's a science. Um, I have, I've been told that I have a type of magnetism. Um, I've actually been told by men that the scent, that the scent that I give off um, is, is like, you know how they say that sharks can smell blood for a mile under the water? That's what I've been told. I've been told that my scent, my natural aroma can attract men from all corners of the world. And it's true. I've seen it in action. You know what I mean? I've seen, I've lived that life. I lived that life. Oh, son of a. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and keep talking to you. Okay. I'm not going, I'm not going to be interrupted by Bernard, why you got to come in here and dust these shelves right now? Why go? You know, I, you know, I couldn't sit outside today. You know that, you know, they out there smoking weed and I don't want to be high for these people. You know that I had to co God dang it. Whatever. Just let him do his thing. Anyway. Okay. So when I was young, I had that magnetism. That magnetism was part of who I was. Nowadays, young ladies. Nowadays, young ladies, they'll be showing up to a date, showing up at a restaurant. They got fake eyelashes on. You know, they got shapewear on. They got all they got all kinds of stuff going on. That's not who you are. That's what happens. Okay, I don't mean to be crass. I don't mean to be crass. But what happens if you go home that night, you take that gentleman home, your romance and your talk, and things escalate a little bit, and he says, Oh, you wanna slip into something more comfortable? And you go, hold on a second, and you pull yourself, you peel yourself out of a hot dog casing. And layers of you just come crawling out. You know what I mean? What happens then? Okay? What happens then? You got to represent yourself from, from right up front. You know what I mean? I always look like this. I'm not mistaking nobody. You see me out in public, I'm looking like this. You know, there ain't no games with me. I'm putting it all up front. So there's that. Don't hide yourself. Be yourself. Be true. Okay? Um, always keep yourself well-groomed. When you're young and in the world of dating... This goes on with being prepared to be yourself. You know what I mean? If you're always yourself, always taking care of yourself, then you should be ready to meet someone at a moment's notice. You know what I mean? You don't need to put on any, anything fake for anybody. So if you're always well-groomed, you don't have to worry about that either. Um, I will say you got to be careful. There are some hazards of maintaining yourself well-groomed. The other day, I was doing some landscaping. You know what I mean? I end up with some ingrowns, you know? You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Um, you got to learn what your body likes, what it doesn't like. If you need to moisturize after grooming, you need to moisturize, okay? Because there ain't nothing more unsightly, you know, than, than, showing, than showing someone your palace, your body. You know, when there's a little, little red spot. I got something. I know, it's okay. There's little red spots everywhere. Three or four hairs growing out of it. One's growing this, that, sideways, okay? So keep yourself nice, keep yourself well groomed, um, but you know, monitor it, monitor it. Now I will say too, you gotta remember, I know it's hard right now during quarantine um, with your hair and everything, but if you look at my, I don't normally take my hat off. I got a lot going on, I got a lot got going on over here. But if you notice, now you will notice that this is natural, this is natural, this is from birth. Okay, my streak is from birth. You know, you, some people may say, hey Carol, how come sometimes we see you, you know, it's all blonde up here, and sometimes we see you it's not? 
that's the earth's rotation. I have, no, I have nothing to do with that, okay? But that ain't fake. I don't bleach that, you know, with the number 40 developer or anything. I don't touch that. What I'm going to talk about is the grays. You see these? Look at this. That's natural. Okay, that's natural. Oh, this hair color natural. You need to be proud of that. I see everybody on Facebook and Instagram all day say, oh, I can't get my hair done. Oh, I need a haircut on my roots. People protesting I need a haircut. Go home. Going to give everyone the death. Go home. You, my mission, your governor, I can't get my hair cut. Should it? Jesus, we'll talk about that some other time. I got a whole, I swear to Jesus. Anyway, don't worry about it. That's your hair. That's what you look like right now. You be proud of that. You got root. That's your natural color. Show them people that, okay? Don't worry about that. Um, another little tip about dating. This may be old-fashioned, and I apologize. Don't pay. Don't pay. Ladies, you out there? Here's the thing. I'm very much for equality, okay? Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that I'm here. I'm here as a voice of the women, of the people, to say that everyone in this world should be equal, okay? There ain't nothing wrong with you going Dutch, each paying for each other, but here's what you don't want, okay? Here's what you don't want, ladies. You don't want a man. You won't be sitting at dinner, sitting at a restaurant with a man. Oh, jeez. Hold on. You don't want to be sitting somewhere with a man, and the bill comes, and they go, mm. Oh, I'm so, oh, can you, you think we can split this? We can. We can absolutely split that. But how are you going to pull that on the first date? That's unacceptable. If you, here's my philosophy. This goes for dating and this goes for life. This is just Southern culture. Okay, this is good Louisiana manners. Okay. If you invite someone out somewhere, the expectation should be, I will treat you. If I were to say to Bernard, Bernard, hey, I would love for you to accompany me to dinner. How about Thursday night? And he goes, yes, I would love to accept that invitation. You accept that invitation? The understanding is that you were to pay for him. If someone invited me out on a date and they said at the end of the meal, okay, you got this? That's ridiculous. That's, not, that's just not manners. Okay, I mean, from then on, absolutely. Go Dutch, do whatever. Okay, but on that first date... Just keep it keep a little old fashioned. That's that's my one old fashioned thing that I stick to. Let me tell you that. That's my one everything else. Everything else. Uh you know, my husband, I force him, you know, he always wants to try to when we're walking down the street, when we're on the sidewalk, he always wants to uh to keep me on the inside. He always wants to walk well, you know, wants to walk next to the street. And I say, Why you wanna do that? He and he says, you know, because if a car, you know, if a car veers out the way and, you know, strikes into the sidewalk, then I'd be killed first, not you. You know, I'd be hit, not you. And I say, well, here's a scenario for you. On the surface, that seems nice, okay? Um, but has have you ever cared for an invalid? You know what I mean? What if, God forbid, he were to get struck and not die? You know what I mean? Now here I am stuck with broken leg McGee. For God knows how. My husband had a hernery surgery. I think I told you about this. He had a hernery. Hernery. How do you say? God dang it. Hernery. Hernery. Had hernia surgery last year. I never heard of him. That was the worst weekend of my life. I almost called his mother to come get him. I said it was ridiculous. What is this? Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Bernard just brought me something. What did you bring me? What is this? Bernard, that's an empty plate. I'm so sorry. For, I'm so sorry. Look at this. What is it? Why do you have an empty plate? You want some nuts? Son of a... You want to eat them with a fork? Get out of my papa's on chair, too. That's specifically for me. Jesus, Lord. Anyway, okay. So that's the only old-fashioned thing I fall into, right, is paying for things, you know. Now, let's talk about modern dating, okay? Because I will say, I haven't had much, you know, I thank God I haven't needed to date in the modern world. But how, how I mean, if y'all out there listening, how do people date? I understand that there's apps, okay, that there's Bumbleflex um, and uh, Tabo. No, I'm sorry, that's a... That's a workout video from the nineties. That um, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you that. That's Bernard trying to do some tabo. Um, what what else? The other name is that Flubber. No wait, hold on. I know one. Um, Twitter. No. Um, Twitter. What's the one where you swipe? What's that one where you swipe? <sighs> Tinder. Tinder. Now I had a friend. I have a I have a young girlfriend that I talked to, and she's on Tinder. And she told me all about how Twitter works: swiping left, swiping right. And I said, well, what determines which way you swipe? And she said, oh, you, I mean, you just go off the feel you get. You know what I mean? Like, you really got to be able to feel someone's energy, you know, through their profile. I said, what kind of hipster bull crap is that? 
We were doing that back in the 60s, but we were doing it face to face. That's the hippie free love nation. We were doing that. You walk up to someone and you get their vibe, you feel their aura and you make a decision. You can't do that through a phone. Okay. And I said, how many people you meet on that? She goes, I meet people every day. I meet people every day. And we, we just hook up. And I said, pray tell. Pray tell. When you say hook up, what do you mean by hook up? Oh, you know, so, you know, we'll just get together, casual Netflix and chill. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm going to need you to explain what Netflix and chill is. And she explained it to me. She explained it to me. And if you don't know what Netflix and chill is, go ask, you know, younger people in your life. Grandkids, neighbor kids. Maybe, okay, hold on. Nope. Maybe don't go to the neighbor kids and ask them if they know what Netflix and chill is. I am not going to be out here promoting that. Yeah, you go talk to neighbor kids about if they want to teach you how to Netflix and chill. Please don't take that out of my mouth, okay? Um, but she told me, and I said, how are you going to get to know someone like that? How are you going to get to know someone like that? You know what I mean? And she says, well, sometimes you go out for coffee first. Oh, great. Fabulous. So you're going to get a latte and you're going to get caffeinated before you go home Netflix and chill. It's disgusting. People, even if you do meet someone off of the Tinder, okay, you need to get to know them a little bit first. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. That's not what I'm here for. You know what I mean? But I just, it's a thing to consider. Okay. Now, let's talk. Let's have, let's have some real talk. Let's have some back and forth. If you got any questions, dating, uh, you know, how to find a partner, you know, shout them out. Where's my pen? Oh, it's another fold. I got it. Uh, shout them out. I wrote down a couple here. Um, I wrote down one. I forget who said it. I think it was Bridget. Probably my Roja, probably Bridget. Uh, wanted to know some fashion advice for a first date. You know, that goes back to me saying, you know, be yourself. Just be yourself. Um, you know, don't be a schlub. You know what I mean? Don't show up in PJs. Don't make it look like you're going on an airplane, okay? You know, make yourself look nice. Make yourself look presentable, but be who you are. If you wear jeans and a T-shirt every day, then wear jeans and a T-shirt. So he's taking you to the opera. So he's taking you to the Dove 3 or whatever version of that restaurant they're on. You know, wear something nice, okay? But just, you know, be representative of yourself. Stay true to yourself, okay? Uh, for me, that would probably be a moo-moo of some kind and my hat. And they're just going to have to deal with that. Oh, that rhymed. I like that. Okay, um, I got another question. I got a great question from Nicole. What, what is advice for, for singles at home right now during this quarantine period? That's a great question. You know what I mean? That's something I can, we can really ruminate on. We can really think about. You know, because this has got, I, you know, blessed be, I do have Bernard. I do have Bernard. Uh, and my husband, he's my other roommate. But like I said, you know, we don't need to discuss him. Um, and so I do. I have companionship during these times. I have companionship. Um, so that's nice. It does have to be difficult being alone. I understand that. What I would suggest is use this time wisely. Use this time wisely to get to know and love yourself. Let me tell you a quick story, okay? My ex, before I met my husband, we were together five or so years, okay? I wanted to further the relationship. I wanted to get married. He didn't want to do so, no such thing. So I said to myself, okay, there's two possible situations here. Situation one, it could have nothing to do with me. He could just not want to get married, and that's that. Situation number two, it could have everything to do with me. You know what I mean? They might hate me. They might think that my natural pheromones don't mess with theirs. But in either scenario, guess what? It don't matter. There ain't nothing you can change about it. So guess who, throughout your entire life, guess who is the only person that every morning you wake up and take a breath is going to be right there in the bed with you? Guess who? Yourself. Yourself. So if you don't take this time now to love who you really are and work on yourself and finding out what you need in a partner, okay, you, you're never going to be solid with someone else. So my advice right now, you know, you know, uh, you know take the time, take a bath, self-care, self-care, read some books, write some poetry, okay? Uh, you know, do whatever you need to do to find out who you really are and who the best person is going to be for that time comes around where someone is worthy of your love. That's my advice. That's my advice. Now I got another question for Shannon. Oh, Shannon, it's a little racy, but I'll talk about, I'll talk about it. We're here for an honest, frank conversation, right? Shannon says, 
How do you feel about internet relations with Zoom? How do you feel about Zoom relations? I'll, I'll, y'all can read the comments. I'll leave it like that. Here's what I feel about that. Now, especially on platforms like Zoom, y'all hear about this? Um, y'all hear about this, that, that they're being hacked. Y'all go Google. There was, I read, I read an article the other day. Some, some kid, this poor, this poor bastard. This poor kid, this grad student was given his doctoral dissertation. Okay. I'm on nuts. He's given a doctoral dissertation over Zoom for his professors. <laughs> and some, some hackers, they just happened to find the meeting link or whatever. And they just went into the meeting and started typing out a bunch of emojis that looked like male genitals. This poor kid trying to give his doctoral dissertation. And all of a sudden, he's got to say, hold on, everybody. I got to pause for a sec. <laughs> I got to try to get these, these penises out of here. Hysterical. So here's my suggestion. You do what you need to do, okay? You do what you need to do to live your life and to feel connected with others. But with everything in this life, you got to accept the consequences. You know what I mean? If you send a nudie pics, you know, if you do a nudie stuff live, you better be willing to do that naked as a jaybird in the street because that's essentially what you're doing. You know what I mean? So if, that, if you're into that, that's on you. You know, you go for it. You go with God, what God blessed you with. But you got to be willing to accept the consequences. Okay, Lissette, what does Lissette say? What is the proper age to let your kids start dating? <laughs> 30, 16, never. That's a good one. So for me, I think with most things in life, now to be granted, I'm not a parent of a, of a human child. I'm a dog mom, as you can see, okay? Um, but my parenting philosophy would be to live but supersized. Wait, supervised, okay? Um, you got to let your kids make mistakes. You got to let your kids live their life, be who they're going to be, develop into who they're going to be. But supervised. I'll explain. When I was growing up in high school, I was a little bit of a bell about town. You know what I mean? I have boyfriends. I have friends. You know, this, that, and the other. Probably why I see so many doctors today. If we're honest, okay, that's just that's reality. You know what I mean? But live and let live. Let them experience things. Now, don't let them run around all hours of the night. You know what I mean? Say, okay, they met someone. They're going to go to a movie, hang out. You know what I mean? Okay, be home by 10. If you're not, my mom always said to me, if you're not going to be home, call me. Let me know where you are. Perfect. That's the thing. Because that puts the responsibility back on them. That way, if they break that rule, you come back and you say, wow, I really trusted you. I really thought we had the kind of relationship that you would know that you could call me and tell me if you were going to be late or, you know, ask permission to do things. Wow, I'm really disappointed. There ain't nothing more you can say to a child but that you ain't mad, you disappointed. Okay? So let them live their life. Let them live their life, but give them the freedom, right, to feel comfortable to talk to you about those things. You know what I mean? And to bring you into their life. Maybe don't let their boyfriend sleep over at your house when you're 15. Okay? Maybe don't do that. Okay? There's some things. You know, use your judgment. Use your common sense. You know, um, if it would be illegal, don't do that thing. You know what I mean? What does Dwight Schrute say? Um, keep it simple, stupid. What did Michael say to him? He said something to the effect of, you know, I will, before I do something, I ask myself, would a stupid person do that thing? And if they would, I do not do it. So that's the guidance. That's the guidance. You know what I mean? Let them live their life. Watch over them a little bit. Watch over them a little bit. You know what I mean? And that ain't nothing to say that you can't low jack their car. You know what I mean? There's a lot of technology out there. You can low jack the phone nowadays. There's apps. There's apps. You can track it. My sister does that with her husband. I don't know if he knows that. Okay. Oh, it's a 629 right on the dot. Look at that. Ooh, perfect timing. Perfect timing for Carol. Okay. Thank you all here for joining me today. I very much appreciate it. You know what I mean? I think we all got to stay connected during these times. I think we really do. Um... Now, and every Tuesday, we're going to have Kiss Carol's Corner. We're going to talk live about different discussions, different things we want to talk about. Oh, thank you for the love, Bridget. You're so kind. We're going to talk about all kinds of different things. And also, uh, I'll, be, I'll be letting you know, you know, watch this channel, Funky Dog Improv. I love you, Mike. Hello. 
you'll keep watching this channel. Um, but Bernard had a good idea. Bernard had the idea that uh, that I should start you doing some some you know regular other videos. You know what I mean? Some cooking videos, sharing some recipes. Um, that that won't be live. That I, that I'll just post on I'll post on the YouTube's. Okay. Uh, so watch this. Watch the Facebook channel and the Instagrams. Uh, Funky Dong Improv on Instas. Uh, watch that there. Follow that. Like that. Subscribe. One of them is a subscription. I don't know. That, that if you watch all the YouTube influencers, they all go okay. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notification. I don't know what the hell one you have to do with that. But I'm gonna be putting some videos out there. But every Tuesday, remember, every Tuesday right here, we're going to be talking live about a lot of different stuff. Whatever topic, you know, people want to talk about. Okay. Oh, in the meanwhile, if y'all got recipes for 12 jalapenos, let me know. Okay? Because I know what the hell I'm going to do with them. All right. I love y'all. Stay safe and stay sane, okay? Peace out. Seacrest out.